To continue my Halloween related videos for the month of October, I give you the top 10 ghosts in WoW. Ghosts are tortured spirits who writhe in the agony of undeath, usually unable to realize that they are no longer alive. They roam the trackless waste between the twisted nether and the physical world, seeking release from the internal suffering. Ghosts are the spectral remains of intelligent beings who, for one reason or another, cannot rest easily in their graves. A ghost greatly resembles its form in life, but in some cases, spiritual form is somewhat altered. Number 10 on this list is Reslek. Reslek's ghosts can be found on top of a mountain in Hillsbrad Foothills. If you're a rogue with a glyph of disguise and pickpocket him, you'll appear as his ghost for 5 minutes. Then, go downstairs in Ravenhold Manor. Use your glyph of detection ability, and you will find another ghost, or sir, who is under the stairs. Talk to him, tell him who's boss. He'll say, close enough, and you'll get a neat little toy box item called the Survivor's Bags of Coins. Number 9 are those black ghosts you see walking around major cities. If you google ghosts in WoW, one of the top suggestions will be, what are those black ghosts in WoW? As it seems to be a common question. During the Wrath pre-launch event, there was an item you could loot, while in your bags will make a black ghost follow you around. These items are pretty rare as of making this video, but might be more commonplace in Warlords, as they have a few items that give the similar effect. Number 8 is Franklorn Forgerite. Franklorn Forgerite, or more commonly known as that one ghost who gives you the quest for the Shadowforge key, was one of the few quest givers that you could only see while dead. Before Cataclysm, Blizzard hinted a few times that there were more hidden ghost quest givers out there, and that no one had found them yet, although this could have just been them trolling. But the fact that this guy, who gave such an important item, and another one on this list, were in the game, it's not too far-fetched to think there could have been more hidden ghost quest givers out there. Number 7 is Rikol Nitchi. In Shatra, next to Harris Pilton stands Rikol Nitchi, who can only be seen with the priest item Eye of Divinity, an item no longer available in game. But lucky for me, I was able to get one before it was removed. Number 6 are the hidden ghost squirrels in the Scarlet Halls. Secret and Secret are two ghost squirrels that can be seen in the Scarlet Halls after the second boss. In order to see them, you need a special ability or a quest item. For me, I just use my rogue's detection glyph. There are a few other hidden ghosts throughout the world that can only be seen this way as well, but these squirrels will be the only ones on this list. Go have fun finding the others yourself. Number 5, the Lone Hunter, a ghost wolf with a sword in its head. There was a bug for a short time that allowed hunters to tame him and keep the sword in his head like it appeared during the quest. All you had to do was dot it up and tame it at the exact moment it died, then cast Revive Pet immediately after that to make its corpse disappear and log out. Then when you logged back in, you had your transparent wolf with a sword in its head. The quest itself is part of another ghost story that I'll tell later on in this video. Number 4 is Garion from the Vanilla Lincoln's Quest. Vanilla WoW, there was an extremely long and hidden quest chain that I plan on making a video of in the future about a guy named Lincoln who lost his memories and you have to help him get them back. The whole quest chain is full of references to Zelda and has to go all over the world to complete. Halfway through the quest chain, you get a quest called Meet at the Grave, which required you to drink an elixir at the Gadgeson Graveyard. The quest giver who gives you the drink says, you might be quite surprised at the results, and when you drink it, you immediately drop dead. Of course, this was part of the quest. You were supposed to go and find Garion, a ghost who was nearby, but not in an obvious location, so most players doing this part of the quest without prior knowledge were very rightly confused. While the quest line is no longer in the game, this ghost still is. Anyways, after finding him, he would then send you back to the graveyard to push the correct gravestones and continue the quest. Number 3, the 7 Dark Moon Ghosts. The Dark Moon Fair has 7 ghosts on the island that can only be seen and talked to while you yourself are a ghost. Each one says a few different dialogues when talked to, telling bits and pieces about their lives and deaths. Martha Weller, the ghost next to the graveyard says, So many people to tend to. The fair is my family. I would never leave my family. I could never leave an injured friend alone. So many people are in need of help. Her comments probably have something to do with her being located near the spirit healer, as if she is the assistant. Franklin Jenner says, So many have died at my hands. I just wanted to escape those horrors. I was promised I would never have to encounter the horrors of war at the fair. The war against the orcs. There seems to be no respite. His comments seem to point to his involvement with either the first or second war, and that he went to the fair to escape it. But that didn't turn out too well for him. Coop Coincare says, My debt was almost repaid. No one was going to miss those last gold coins. I didn't think anyone would mind if I did stay to help run the fair. Most of my debt was repaid, I think. Silas was able to repay most of my debt as long as I worked at the fair. His comments seemed to point at the fact that he was most likely killed for not repaying a loan or for stealing. Brendan Paulson says, I ran away from home in Strom after my father tried to kill me. I remember telling Silas, I never want to see my family again. For most of my life, the fair has been my home. I joined the fair as a child. My life before the fair was hard. I never missed it, or my family. 
I joined the fair to escape my family. His comments are some of the most interesting. Notice that he says that he is from Strom. Strom ceased to be about 1,000 years ago when the nobility left to found Stormwind, and those who stayed behind renamed the city to Stromgard. That means the Darkwind Fair has been around for at least a thousand years. Or that he is shortening the name of Stromgard for the sake of it and is actually not all that old. Since he does mention Silas, the current leader of the Darkwind Fair who is a gnome, and gnomes are not known to live for a thousand years. Scythera Wellspun says, When I woke up, I couldn't find my way back to the campsite. I was supposed to get firewood for the campsite. I have such a hard time gathering firewood. I thought I saw something in the bushes nearby, then I suppose I blacked out. Her comment seems to suggest that she was going out to get firewood, something attacked her from the bushes, and when she woke up couldn't find her way back, or got lost and died when she was attacked. Zalza the Troll Ghost says, I barely survived the shipwreck. Silas kept me safe from my previous captors. I saw my captors die horrible deaths, and I laughed. The fair kept me from an execution. It saved my life. His comment seems to hint that he was captured and got caught in a shipwreck, which killed his captors and he survived on the island. And finally, we have Arlen Sherhoof, who says, These woods are dangerous, a lesson I learned the hard way. I am to keep a close watch over the camp. I don't know how long I've been watching over the camp. Even death will not keep me from my duty to watch over the camp. From her comments, it's safe to assume she had something to do with watching over the camp. Number two on this list is Janice Fellstone, who sadly is no longer in the game. Jeremiah Payson, the cockroach vendor in Undercity, was once Jeremiah Fellstone. He may have lived in the Fellstone field, a farm in Western Plaguelands, with his sister Janice. Janice was married to John Fellstone, who died in a most unpleasant manner. John became a jabbering ghoul to roam around the fields restlessly under the scorch. Jeremiah was killed and somehow joined the Forsaken and now sells cockroaches underneath the bank in Undercity. Janice herself used to be involved in a quest where she mistakes you for a delivery boy and leads you to a package in the barn adjacent to her house. After you get the package, it tells you to go to Undercity and find its owner, and after asking around, you find out it belongs to the cockroach vendor. The cockroach vendor then gave you half of the good luck charm and you go back to Janice. Janice requests you to find the other half of the charm, which would turn out to be dropped by a jabbering ghoul patrolling the area filled outside. From quest text, you can gather that the jabbering ghoul is her husband. When all is said and done, you combine the two halves and create the good luck charm. When you give it to Janice, she claims a great weight has been lifted off her chest and she thanks you deeply. And finally, number one on this list, Pamela Redpath. In Vanilla WoW, the quest chain started out with Pamela's aunt, who tells you that she hit her niece during the Battle of Dyrshire, and asks you to go to Dyrshire to look for her. Considering her aunt is a ghost, this does not bode well. Once you manage to find her in the Plague Lands, she tells you, My auntie Marilyn told me to stay here in our house because my father had to go and fight. My father is the bravest man in the whole world, but I've been here for a long time, and he hasn't come for me. Sometimes bad people come and whisper to me and I want my dad to make them go away, but he's not here. And sometimes when it gets dark, I want to play with my doll, but I can't because I left it in town. Will you find my doll for me? With Cataclysm, her quest chain was chained slightly. Now it starts off with her uncle asking you to find her, and when you talk to her she gives you the doll quest, just like from Vanilla, and the Ghost Wolf quest. My daddy always kept two swords, one for fighting with men and one for hunting the animals. I wasn't supposed to touch his swords, but I knew where he hid them. One day he told mommy that he was going to fight a lone hunter in the hills to the east, but he brought his animal sword with him. When he came back, he didn't have his sword with him. When daddy comes back, he'll be so happy when I give him his animal sword. Will you go find it? The sword is in the lone hunter's head, the wolf from earlier in this list. Once you complete both quests, she says, I'm going to play with Dolly, but I don't want to play with Daddy's sword after all. You better keep it. Even better, can you give it to my Uncle Carlin? I'm not sure where he is, but sometimes I hear him crying. It sounds like he's nearby to the north. I hope he's not crying for me. Will you find my uncle and tell him I'm alright? If you find him, say I'm waiting for him, and I want to hear the story he used to tell. The one with the rabbits and the berry jam. That story is so funny. Then, when you go and tell her uncle about her death, that starts a quest chain to recreate the Battle of Darshire and to help Pam's dad, Sol, find rest. After Joseph walks to his house to talk to his little girl, Pamela, this is what transpires. The fighting is over. I heard my daddy whisper to me. He scared away all the ghosts and he says he's coming home. I'm so happy. He also said I should welcome you to our house, so I made some tea. I hope you like lots of sugar. You can also see Pamela and her dad alive in the Colon of Stratholm instance on the second floor of the building you zone into. Pam is playing with her doll, and her dad is laying on the bed. 